Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're talking about a good news. Calculation groups now work in Power BI Desktop. Thumbs up. However, there is some bad news. There is a major bug in this release, which makes it a double thumbs down for me. As you probably know, today a new version, a July version of Power BI Desktop was released. There was a bunch of new features that got announced. I am not gonna be covering all of those features in this video. I will probably take a deeper dive into those new updates over the weekend in my blog. In this video, I will just talk about something I've been waiting for many, many months, and uh, I'm super excited that it's finally here, even though it's not working quite right, but that's definitely the step in the right direction, so I'm super excited. I will cover calculation groups in Power BI, how they work, what works, and most importantly, what does not work and why I don't think you will be using this feature quite yet. So let's talk about how we are now able to create calculation groups in Power BI. The most important thing to, to know right now is that you cannot create calculation groups directly in Power BI Desktop. However, if you have Tabular Editor installed on your machine, so uh, there is a new feature available right now called external tools. And uh, if you install ALM toolkit, Dex Studio, Tabular Editor, if you install those things independently on your machine, then they will show up here in this tab. And the tool that we need to do our calculation groups to create them is Tabular Editor. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on Tabular Editor. It will launch the tool and it'll con connect it to the analysis services model that's uh, running inside of this Power BI desktop file. So let me go ahead and launch it. So here I have a tabular editor launched and connected to our Power BI desktop model. Uh, if you're not familiar with the tool, it's definitely worth your while to get used to this tool. In fact, I'm finding myself doing most of my development in tabular editor and now that it's natively integrated, well, quote unquote, but now that I can launch Tabular Editor and auto-connect it uh, right from Power BI Desktop, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty nifty. I, I find myself doing most of my development in this tool. The most important reason is uh, a lot of models I work with tend to have a lot of measures, hundreds, sometimes thousands of measures. And for whatever reason, Power BI Desktop over time has become really sluggish when it hits that critical mass of measures. So if, you, if your model is getting up in size in terms of measures, you might seriously consider switching all of your development to Tabular Editor. So how do we create a calculation group? Turns out it's very simple. You drill into the tables in, in your model, you right click on your tables and you say create new calculation group. Then you give it a name, then you can right click on the calculation group and you need to create a calculation item. So, and normally you would have uh, this calculation groups, I call it time intelligence. So it will work with it will deal with things like this year versus last year, year over year. So any kind of time intelligence things, year to date. So you would add all of those calculations here. So now I've created a calculation item TY this year. Uh, you can double click and rename it here, or you can click on name and name it here. And then now what we wanna do is we want to return a value. So the way calculation groups implement the common logic that could be applied to a bunch of different metrics in your table. In my case, I have a calculation for revenue, gross margin, cases, units, and so forth. So if I have to do this year versus last year comparisons, year over year, year over year, over year percent, and a bunch of other calculations, I have to do it for every single measure. So if I have 100 measures, and for each of those I have to implement year over year, uh, prior year value and so forth, then for each of those scenarios, I'll have to basically implement a new measure. So I'll go from 100 to sometimes 400, 500, 1,000 different measures that basically do the same thing. Calculation groups allow us to just implement, write that logic once and reuse it for all of the measures that we would like. So here I implemented the DEX to basically return the value of whatever measure I happen to select. So uh, TY or this year value for revenue will return revenue. This year value for units will return units. Now what I wanna do is implement prior year sale value. In order to do that, I just right click, say new calculation item, call it PY for prior year, or you can call it LY for last year, whatever you'd like. 
And the formula for that will be um, very simple. Select, uh, calculate whatever measure we want and use same period last year function. So if I don't forget, I will zoom in here and you can see that the logic for prior year value is calculate. Then I'm calculating whichever measure will be passed into this calculation item. And then I'm just gonna apply the filter for last year, same period last year, date, date. And this will calculate if I'm doing it for revenue, whatever my revenue was for the same period that's already selected, but last year. Note that my calculation items here have these question marks next to them. And then if you take a look at the model to the right, you see that the time intelligence, so here I have time intelligence. I don't have time intelligence here on the right. In order for me to push these changes into my desktop, all I need to do is hit Control S on my keyboard or hit this button here, save the changes to the connected database. So if I hit, a, hit this button, click on this button, now we see that a new table appeared in my list of tables in my model. And I have a message here that says one or more calculation groups need to be manually refreshed. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on refresh now. And now you can see that our calculation items, the question marks went away. Now, whatever the model is in the, in the tabular editor is exactly the same as the one in the Power BI desktop. So they're completely synchronized. How would I use this calculation group now? One of the ways for me to do this I can add a filter for time intelligence and I'm just gonna bring name into the filters on this page and I'm gonna require single selection and I'm gonna click on PY. And you could see that my revenue is changing. So depending on what I pick, TY, TY will be this year or PY for, for, for prior year, you see how the same graph and the same measure now we're showing two different results. Now this implemented what I wanted to implement. However, there is a bit of a problem. What I would want, I would want the TY to go before PY. So basically I want, I want to be able to sort these values. So as I click on these two calculation items, you will know that ordinal value changes here. So there's two ways for me to do it. I could, for example, move PY above TY. And now you see that TY has an ordinal one and PY has an ordinal zero. If I move TY above PY, then they reverse. PY now is one and TY. So you can either drag them uh, up or down in order to arrange them in whichever order you would like, or you could change this ordinal number to, uh, to specify in which order these calculation items are supposed to go. So now you can see that I, I have TY above PY. I'm gonna click on deploy and then I need to click on refresh now, and now my TY is above PY. If you don't select any calculation group, the default measure behavior is gonna be observed in the, char in the chart. So I just implemented two time intelligence measure this year and prior year. Uh, the next would be to implement year over year, year over year percent, year to date, quarter to date, month to date, and then all of the variations, the permutations of all time intelligence calculations that we're used to doing in our model. To save time, I'm not gonna do this in this video, but you hopefully get an idea. And now we're gonna be talking about the sad part of this news and the big problem with the way it's been implemented thus far and why I do not think you will be implementing it quite yet. So I wanna just rearrange my desktop in such a way that I can be making changes in the tabular editor and you guys can see how those changes are immediately reflected in the charts below. And I wanna talk about this super awesome and super important feature of calculation groups called format string expression. This is extremely powerful. Why is it powerful? Well, because it allows us to format the measure on the fly, or at least that, that's what the promise is. So the promise is that if I, I can specify a calculation item and depending on what it's supposed to return, it can format the result. Even if I use a measure that's natively formatted as dollars, uh, I can format it in calculation item to return percentage. Why is it important? Well, the next one that I wanna do is year over year percent. So how much did my sales grow? Well, that will be a percentage. And to do a percentage, I have to divide the difference in sales by sales last year and calculate the percentage. So it would be awesome if I had that option to pick an up drop down year, year over year percent and display everything in percent. However, now we're getting into the Achilles heel of this whole thing 
and what's fundamentally broken. I assume that you guys are familiar with formatting options in Power BI, how you can format something as a percent or as a dollar or as a whole number. And you could specify that format here in this format string expression. The other thing that Microsoft provides for us, which is super convenient when it works, is this function called selected measure format string. What does that do? It allows us to look up, so whichever, you know, for example, if I pass the measure that's formatted as a whole number, I can return the default format for that measure and format the return expression of this the same way. So if I pulled in dollars, I'm gonna get something that's formatted as a dollar. If I pull in units, I'm gonna have something that's formatted as a, as a whole, whole number. Uh, this is a really nifty and convenient function because it returns the format of the current measure that's we're, that we're passing in the chart. However, let's see what happens when I try to deploy this. Watch into these four charts and see what happens the minute I hit save. And now you see why you would not be using this right now. So what you're seeing is that the formatting of the dollars and the percent is gone. So regardless of what's in my filter condition, which I was not using anything at the time, uh, both of the time intelligence functions were, were not selected. But now as a minute I used any sort of formatting expression here in format string expression, it completely breaks my trend charts. What's funny is that it works fine for the card charts. So you see it formats this here as a dollar and formats this here as a percent. And now if I pick, if I pick my different values, you see that it's still formatting everything correctly. Everything works fine for the card control, but it does not work for the trend charts or line charts. And that's a bug that's, that's not acceptable. Basically, I can no longer use any formatting for all of my measures anytime I have formatting. So if I have, if I want to see percent, I see them as decimals. If I formatted revenue as measure, as dollars, I'm not seeing dollars. That's just simply not acceptable. Turns out there's an easy way to fix it. Although when I say fix it, you can get the formatting back by just removing this function here and deploying it again. And the minute you do that, you will see the percent and dollar format options come back, but that's just not acceptable. Maybe in your case, you're gonna have some calculation items or calculation group logic that does not require formatting. Uh, and I think this is possible, but generally speaking, that's the whole power of the calculation groups is that you can mix and match different formats and you can that you can implement a bunch of different scenarios uh, and then reuse them for different measures regardless how they're formatted originally. So this is a big showstopper for me. Uh, I'm gonna try to raise it as a bug on support.microsoft, uh, support.powerbi.com. Uh, I suggest you guys raise the same bug as well. I'd like to raise awareness with Microsoft as much as possible so they can fix this bug as quickly as possible because I think this is one of the most important updates to Power BI that we have seen in months. Okay, this is it for today. Hope you found this to be pretty interesting. Hope you learn a little bit about calculation groups and are as excited about this new feature as I am. I know that it's not fully baked uh, yet and there is a little bit of uh, ways to go before it's uh, production ready, but uh, it's almost there. Uh, they just need to fix. I mean, it already works for some charts. It just doesn't work for one of the most important charts we have in Power BI. So hopefully that'll be fixed soon. The new Azure map visual was also released. So I owe you guys a review of that. And I will be reviewing some of the other new updates that have been published on the blog today. So look for that the next uh, day or two. Thanks for stopping by. Looking forward to seeing you back very soon. Bye.